Hello and welcome to episode 1 of my devlog for my game Luna Lane. This episode, I'm showing you my game. This is Luna Lane. It's a Metroidvania game, and what you are seeing is actually footage of my first ever build of the game. It's pretty rough, the walls look like a circus tent, uh, the main character looks a bit wonky, especially when he stands still, nothing really pops out to the player. I have this little slime enemy, they all jump in the same exact direction, they don't really have an animation, they just jump and they mirror the image when they're moving left, and when they move right they set the image to not be mirrored, and that was as far in depth as I got with an enemy for this. This room is the bedroom. This X is a save point for the player. Every single bedroom is exactly the same, so if you did something to change one bedroom, the next time you go into another bedroom, it'll be the same. Because the premise of this game is that you're pretty much locked inside a giant magical house by an evil wizard. Now, I actually want to take some time to tell you the story of Luna Lane. It takes place in a set amount of continents, there's actually four of them, two, two of them are mainland continents and the rest of them are islands. This takes place in the capital, which is the lowest continent. It's actually a, kind of like a really small island, but it kind of sort of brings all of the other places together. Now this isn't really shown off in the game, but I told you in the last devlog that I've been making this world for many many years, almost 7 now. You are going to awake in a home full of monsters and danger with no recollection of how you got there. Upon exploring further, you are introduced to an evil wizard named Provior. Provior explains his home originally was a magical house of excitement for children and families to come to for entertainment, but was shut down by the royal court for being unsafe. Provior, having spent 27 years studying magic to make the home, becomes furious and puts a spell on the entire town, forcing each resident to be stuck inside the home forever, which now it's full of evil traps instead of fun excitement. Upon meeting with Rayland, which is the wizard's daughter, you discover he was a peaceful and happy man who tried to abuse the powers of the Luna Lane which caused corruption to his soul, making him the evil man he is now. This story will be introduced to you if you play through the main storyline, which I don't know if I'm going to make everything optional or if I'm going to make a set path that you have to go on. But if you play through the main storyline, then you'll understand this story. So here is the game in its current state. There's a lot of stuff that are placeholders, like those paintings in the background. Speaking of those paintings in the background, I have started a Patreon page for Luna Lane, and if you pledge $10 or more, you will be able to get a template for this painting, and I will let you draw anything you want. You could draw a self-portrait, you could draw your house, you could draw anything that's safe for work, obviously. There's no like copyright attached to what you draw. If you draw something that's eligible, then I will put it in the game, and there is only a limited number of slots, so if you go to the description, there's the Patreon link, you do not have to do it. I'm also going to give away three paintings to people who are just really good supporters of the game because not everybody has money to back something like this, but might enjoy the game a lot. Okay, let's get back to gameplay. As you can see, this is a new area, it's not finished. Let me, let me just explain this. I've spent a lot of time setting up these main four rooms in the beginning. The first room that you see, if you just kept going to the right there, is a room where you cannot access. Now, obviously this is going to put this into the back of the player's head and they're going to think, I want to get over that, I wonder what is in there. Then as they go up, they will meet a save room. The save room will show the player how to save. It'll also show them something about Luna Pond cards, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Now, if they keep going and they go left, there's another area that they can't reach. And they think, well, if I could just jump a little bit higher, I could get up there. Then when you go to the right, you get high jump. High jump lets you jump higher. So then this clicks in the player's head and they go, oh, I figured you out. I can get to these places now. So they go back and they go up and they find a gem and then they go oh so there's stuff if I go off the path then they go back down to the room they couldn't reach before they jump up they get over and I don't want to tell you what's there but then they'll say oh 
the next thing I'd like to show you is this enemy called the Cloche. It's a spirit trapped under a dinner cloche, which is like a, those little metal toppers. And his name is spelled C-L-O-A-C-H-E because it's a mixture of cloak and cloche because he's hiding under a cloche. He throws forks at you, they stick into the environment, he hides from you if you get too close to him, and if you hit him it knocks his cloche off and he cowers in fear as you, you destroy him. Now let's take a look at the slimes in the old build of the game. They jumped, there was like no pixels on the bottom of them, and they all jumped in the same direction. Now let's look at my little updated version of them. Their movement is independent from one another, they can jump in the same direction, but that's just purely by luck. They also have an actual jumping animation as opposed to just making them jump in the game. Now I found out that I like to do this method a lot better than actually making them jump in the game by coding it, unless they really need to get some height. So I just reached about over the 6 minute mark, so I think I'm going to cut it for today. I, because obviously I'm going to need some more content to show you guys another time. I want to get a demo of this out sometime, which will include the first area, Haunted Household. It's about 20 levels and a boss with a quest. You will be able to get a few collectible things, some side stuff, some treasure. If you would like that, please tell me down below. Also, I want to know your guys' game dev stories. I always love hearing game dev stories. And I want to take the rest of this video to talk about other game devs and their creations. Upon releasing the first devlog for Luna Lane, I wasn't expecting to get over 100 views. I wasn't expecting to get over 20 views. And you guys have shot up my subscribers through the roof. And I just wanted to make a channel to show the development and I always follow indie game devlog people because they're so inspiring to other people that are doing it. And a majority of the people watching indie game devlog videos are indie devs themselves. And if you are wanting to show off your creation, even if you think it's bad or you think your voice is awkward or anything, just continue to do it because the support, it will really drive you to keep, to keep being motivated. And just commenting one thing on one indie game dev vlog video could make that person push to finish their game. And it's such a beautiful process. The footage in the background here is of another indie developer, Eendhorn? Eendhorn? I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. He is making a really cool platformer game that's got a lot of like parkour stuff in it. I will definitely put a link to it down below. And also, he has a game out called Spirit Sphere DX on the Nintendo Switch. Like, he has an actual game that he released himself. It is only $10. It kind of is like some like ping pong tennessy kind of thing, but with RPG elements. And on Friday, I don't know when I'm posting this, but on Friday, I'm definitely going to buy it to show support to him. And I recommend you buy it. I probably might post some gameplay of it or something. I might buy your guys' indie games and play them. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a job. But I will do my best to try and support the other developers. Now, everyone that commented on the video that has a devlog, I'm going to post links to their channels in the description for you guys to check it out. I just felt like if I put too much advertisement for other people, which I'm not told to do this. I'm just doing this out of the grace of my heart and I, I love the community um, I'm gonna put stuff to them down below but I think at the end of every devlog I'm gonna do a little bit of a shout out to one of the people that I watch or one of the people that are supporting me so thank you guys so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next devlog